the management, the chairman, the, the team of the trustees who are running this college on the theme that you just don't empower academically the students. But they go out as a good citizen of India, as a good Muslim with a holistic uh, growth in life. So when, I don't know if you are the first, second or third year. I don't know which, which department you belong to. And what marks or what areas or what achievements you have. All that is in papers and in, you know, it is, it is in uh, the degree that you get. Definitely it is very important for the competitions you face in life. But the bigger competition you face in life is are you going to be a good human being or not? Are you going to be a good citizen or not? And are you going to be a good slave of Allah or not? I am not here to give a long lecture to you. But since you all have given us wonderful presentation, I was really enjoying. I am sure my friend Yasin also would have enjoyed. The way you all have brought, brought uh, the themes, the names of the great freedom fighters of this wonderful nation. We feel so proud. Maybe few of you got very nervous while presenting. Few of you forgot some lines. Few of you were not very confident in presenting it. And few have done well. Doesn't matter at all. Whether you win or you lose, don't bother. Because you have stood up here and you have remembered those martyrs who have made us sit in this free India. So let us all give a big uh, round of applause to those great freedom fighters of this wonderful nation. Remember, uh, this nation was divided into princely states, uh, you know, governed by different kings and maharajas and nawabs and it was, you know, it was in shambles. It was during the Mughal period that this different princely states and different divisions were all brought together as a nation. After the Mughal rule came the British era when we were a British colony, we were enslaved by the British Raj. So that India which was ruled under the kingdom of the Mughals for nearly 800 years now became a slave country. If you just recollect, during the 600 to 800 years of rule of the Mughal Raj, there was not a single freedom fight. There was not a single, of course there were fights between the territories, there were fights between the states, there were fights between the kingdoms. But there was never a fight by the people who were living in this great country that they wanted to get free out of the Mughals. My, my dear, uh, my, my daughters are of your age, so I can call you my darlings. I don't know what you take out from this competition and go out, but take this theme and go out of what you have presented here, because that is being challenged today. I remember one of the participants said, the citizenship itself is challenged today. This citizenship we have won, uh, not by somebody's, uh, uh, you know, uh, arms to us. It's not a charity which was given to us. We have fought it and we have achieved it. After the British rule, when, after the Mughal rule, when we were a British colony, it was just within a few years because the British entered into India to start business with us. If the history students are here, they will tell us in length and breadth. The East India Company was the very first venture they came into India through the Calcutta. And then, as they say, you know, the, the, the camel just put his head into the tent. If you have heard the story, he just wanted to cover his head. Then the camel said, my, my back is hurting. It's exposed to the sun. I'm feeling very hot. So he brought his, its, its body in and then it fully came inside and pushed out everybody else. That's how the Britishers came into India, wanting to do barter, wanting to do business, entered into the West Bengal area, the geographical entrance through the sea, wanted to do business on the name of the East India Company. And then East India Company went on to capture the entire India which the Mughals had created. And then within few years, the outbreak of 
we becoming a free colony freed colony not being enslaved as a british colony we wanted a free india and in the free india thousands and thousands of leaders have led the freedom movement lakhs of people have laid down their lives have been martyred for this cause you have presented 13 heroes to us today two women and 11 men uh, of course um, these are all icons these are all heroes you can't just bring them in one poster you can't tell the tell about them in 2 minutes i mean i it was really pathetic i felt very sad 2 minute plus 1 minute grace time i mean these are people who have lived their entire life for us to sit free today and now we are having no time to give to them but nevertheless these are those who have given this great nation to us today as we are remembering them them i want you to go out of this auditorium thinking what am i going to give back to my country as the famous saying goes of the father of the nation mahatma gandhi don't ask what india has done to you ask what you have done for india especially now when india is in the crossroads when the people are on the roads when people are all fighting for their citizenship i am not going to talk to you about that here but i only want to emphasize to you that as they all unitedly dreamt of a free india unitedly stood up for the struggles of freeing india and laid down their lives without expecting anything absolutely anything and especially being a woman woman of this great land and being a muslim it's all the more responsible on us because the religion of islam says love for your motherland is part of your faith whichever land you live in you have to have the connection to the land you must have the love for the land we are the sons and daughters of the soil being a woman maybe you had you saw only two ladies being portrayed here bi amma and begum hazrat mahal we have forgotten to dig out the history of the scores of women who have laid down their lives for this country the scores of women the wives of these martyrs the mothers of these martyrs the daughters of these martyrs the sisters of these martyrs so as girls as females and women of this country we have to ask now what sort of an india do i dream what sort of an india do i want to live in and do i want my future nation to live in do i want an india which is going to be divided in the name of religion have we ever thought about i know there are many uh, uh, girls here from the fellow community have we ever thought that oh she's a hindu i will not be friend with her oh she's she's a muslim i will not you know mingle with her she's a christian did we ever choose our friends in the name of religion i personally was brought up in a brahmin family my neighbors mummy never even used to ask where i am we were brought up like that that is what india stands for so many religions so many languages so many cultures so many traditions different types of background but all that is united together when we say we are indians the unity in diversity is the pride of india and that pride has to be safeguarded how will it be safe 